Hey y'all, welcome to my first video on this channel. My name is Chelsea and this is one of my dogs, Rally. He decided to join me for the first recording here and this is probably like take uh, 900 and something, I don't know. But on this channel, we will be talking about horror movies and true crime stories. So, and you know, the horror movies that were inspired by the true crime stories. And if you like that type of thing, I would love it if you hit subscribe and you liked and all that good stuff. And stick around for some videos in the future. And other than that, today, me and Rowley are going to be talking about the Amityville Horror. So, um, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. But other than that, let's go. So, The Amityville Horror is one of your favorite movies, you say. Well, let's talk a little bit about it. So, we do know there is a true crime story that happened in The Amityville Horror House, which is a real house, by the way. It is 112 Ocean Avenue in Long Island. The address has since been changed. So, at this Amityville Horror House in 1974, a family of seven uh, was living in it, and everybody but one of them was was killed and the son of the family ronald jr also known as butch actually shot everybody in the family while they laid in their bed sleeping and this all allegedly happened at 3 15 in the morning and butch was actually sentenced so this happened at, on november 13th 1974 and he was sentenced to six life sentences for each of the deaths that he committed now, the reason he said for doing this was that he had voices in his head. So there's this whole theory and alleged conspiracy. I don't really know, but how, like what word to say, I guess. But supposedly there was a demonic presence in this home and it sent voices to Butch. And that is who told him to end up killing all his family members. So what's interesting is when he went to trial, they actually brought a psychologist to like analyze him. The psychologist actually, or the psychiatrist, not psychologist, sorry. The psychiatrist actually um, said that he had antisocial personality disorder. So with antisocial personality disorder, this would mean that the actions of, of Butch or a person that has it, this person wouldn't think that those actions were wrong. So you couldn't really plead insanity for this type of, like this wouldn't be a good defense if you have this disorder. On to the movie. That is the brief synopsis of, of the story behind what inspired the movie. And then moving forward, the movie actually talks more about the hauntings that took place in the house afterwards. So Kathy and George Lutz come across this home about a year after all this happens. And it is a huge home with a boathouse, it's on the water, it has a pool, all the good things. They tell the kids about it, they're really excited. And this is a really good deal for a home. They're getting it for $80,000. And while this was above their budget, and they found out why it was such a good deal, the realtor had disclosed to them what happened to the DeFeo family just a year prior. Kathy ended up pulling her kids aside and letting them know what happened. And they said, well, no, that's fine. Let's just move in anyways. What I do find interesting about this is that all the DeFeo family's belongings were still in this home. So that's kind of creepy. But they decide to go ahead and move in anyways. And just a quick little slide in here. What actually happens in the 2005 version of the movie is the babysitter is the one that tells Daniel and the other kids how, what actually happened in the home. And that is not true. What happened in real life is that Kathy did tell the kids before they moved in. So everybody knew about it. Everybody was aware of it and they chose to move in anyways. They said, that's fine. This is a good deal. And I believe George's words, he did actually say, I know he says in the movie that houses don't kill people, people kill people. And I'm pretty sure based on all my research that he actually did say something along those lines in real life. And again, that's why they chose to move in. So moving day comes along and the kids are really excited and it was kind of a self move thing. So everybody's packing the family themselves and they're getting ready to go to this house. So they pack up their U-Haul or whatever moving truck they used and they get to this home and Kathy actually ends up contacting Father Ray, who is from a local church. 
and has him come by the house during the time that they moved. And in the movie, you'll see Father Ray actually comes in at a later time in the movie, but in real life, he comes on moving day. Um, I could only guess that it was to bless the house or something like that because of their knowledge of what happened prior to their move in. So Father Ray goes into the house while Daniel's still out in the truck and Father Ray ends up coming out not too long after that and he leaves early and nobody understands why. He doesn't tell the family why, he just chooses to leave. And so they're like, okay, well that was weird. And so Daniel ends up taking some boxes up into the playroom. And while he's taking these boxes into the playroom, he says that he just sees a ton of flies in there all over the place. So he takes a newspaper and he's killing them all and he's killing them all. And then he says, you know, I had to at least kill 100 flies. He goes back and he says, Mom, I, I killed all these flies in the playroom, you know, thinking he did a good thing. And then his mom went up to the playroom and the newspaper he used to kill the flies was not there and the flies were not there. So that's very strange. And as we see in the movie, the flies actually attack the priest when he comes into the building or when he comes into the, to the home. So that's not exactly how it happened, but we're off to a great start in this home. As you can tell, it's very creepy. Some weird things happening just right away. So Daniel Lutz is definitely somebody that comes forward. Daniel and George Lutz, they come forward and talk a lot about their experiences in this home because ultimately there were many more paranormal experiences and we will continue to touch on those throughout this video, but the, the family only stayed there for 28 days. The family claims that George started to get really angry and it kind of changed his personality while they were in there. And then a little bit more about George. So allegedly George had interests in the occult and demonic things and stuff like that. And it is believed that maybe he had brought this demonic presence in the home, but also doesn't truly explain what happened to the DeFeo family before that. So it's really interesting to see kind of this back and forth in comparison, especially because the fam any of the families afterwards that lived in this home have never experienced anything paranormal. But back to where we are today. So... With George's personality changing, and then as well as Daniel's personality changing, they said that he kind of got more aggressive as well. Everybody kind of started changing, and things started getting really weird in this home. And then when they would leave the home, it was like everything was fine. And then they would come back, and this energy would just kind of turn them into really mean, aggressive people. And not only that, but there were also claims that there were a lot of cold spots in the home. Now, some of the stuff that I've read says that those cold spots were actually the places where the family was was killed before in the DeFeo family. And then other things kind of didn't make sense and didn't necessarily align with that. But either way, Daniel Lutz is the one that claims that those cold spots never moved. It was the same cold spots each every place around the house. And he does describe where these places are in the Miamiville horror movie which is available, I think, on Amazon Prime. I think you do have to buy it or rent it, but if you're really interested in that, he kind of discloses a lot more about this. And it's very, very crazy. And what I, I loved kind of seeing his emotion. And so you can really feel that this was real to him, whether it happened or not, it was very real to him. And he eventually, not eventually, but ever since this happened, he was kind of known as the Amity excuse me, after all this happened, he was kind of known as the Amityville guy, which obviously nobody would appreciate. And so that was why he moved away from, from that area. So he no longer lives in the Long Island area. So there were also claims that Daniel says he got like thrown up the stairs, which is terrifying. And I don't really know a whole lot about how that could have possibly happened. But he does say that he got thrown up the stairs, which is creepy because a lot of things you think about like paranormal, like they can't touch you. But we see all the time in films and we hear about how certain paranormal experiences actually do interfere with, with us and, and they can touch human life. And it's very crazy to believe that this could possibly be true. If you've experienced something like this, please leave it in the comments. I'm very curious. Another thing that the family describes is that there was kind of a nasty stench and the way Daniel described it, it was like a dumpster juice, which is super gross. And I hate that I have to say that. That's so gross. Now I want to go light a candle. But so he expresses that. And during that time that the family had actually 
started smelling the stench they were trying to open up the windows and trying to kind of air out the house and get some fresh air in there so they don't smell it anymore because it's only coming from inside of the house and so they're airing out the windows and then Daniel is trying to pry this window open and he's trying he's trying he finally opens it and he's like oh my gosh he's so excited that he got it open he's just a kid and this window was like jammed shut and then all of a sudden the window slams back down on him and what he describes it as it completely like flattened his fingers and he describes it as skin to skin which freaks me out so they eventually pry the window back off of his fingers and he goes downstairs and his mom goes to get ice and they're going to ice his hands and so far they're still really flat and he says that before they even get the ice on them that they started to swell up and then all of a sudden like just a few seconds later they were normal again and it, that doesn't make any sense <laughs> and in that same that same time when his hands go back to normal, he says that him and his mother had saw a spirit walk into the house and sit next to them while they were at the table. And whatever the spirit wanted, whether it was evil or not, it's it, he says that it was there and it knocked the butter knife off of the table. So needless to say, there's a lot going on in this house in just that short period of time that they're there and it's quite terrifying. So the situation with the dog as well is a little bit different than it was in the movie. So I guess the garage door, according to Daniel, Daniel Lutz, the garage door was rapidly moving up and down and up and down and just slamming and it kept slamming. And so him and George would try to hold this garage door down while it kept going. And all of this made the dog freak out and the dog was on a leash, but it was like in its little like pen area, it's fenced off area. And the dog tries to jump over the fence and the leash isn't long enough for him to actually put his feet on the ground. And so Daniel sees this and he runs over and then he, he tosses the dog back over to, to save it. So that way it stops the dog from, you know, hanging itself. And so, for, so that way it stops the dog from choking itself. So, that happens and I know in the movie the dog kind of freaks out and, and all this other weird stuff happens and I don't like to talk about what happens to the dog in the movie even though all horror movies seem to have a little a little bit of that but if if you've seen it you know what I'm talking about so after all this happens and that 28 days is over and the family leaves they tell their experience to a news station once and then they don't want any publicity they go silent for weeks and then Laura Didio, I don't know if that's how you say her name. I'm sorry if that's not it, but she was a local five news reporter. Um, she was a local news reporter in Long Island for Channel 5 News, and she actually reached out to them and was able to kind of gain their trust because she was somebody that was doing a series on psychic phenomenon. And so she had a lot of connections in the paranormal world, including Ed and Lorraine Warren, who we know from other horror movies have done a lot of paranormal investigation and things like that so that name does come up a lot and will probably come up that name those names will definitely come up a lot on this channel I'm sure in the future so maybe we'll just do a whole move a whole video on Ed and Lorraine Warren let me know your thoughts so she actually gains their trust and they talk a little bit about more paranormal experiences and then they get in touch with Ed and Lorraine Warren who come over to the house and a weird photo was taken while they were there and kind of at the end of this I from what I understand Lorraine felt some sort of presence there but there really wasn't anything obvious and they couldn't deduce that there was truly anything in this home and then following that again like I'd mentioned before no other families had experienced any of this so it's very very strange that it only happened to this family and then somebody also claims that maybe the house was exercised and that was why, like when Ed and Lorraine came over or something like that, that that's why there's no longer a presence there. When Ed and Lorraine Warren and a few other people were doing their investigation at the home, there was a photo that was taken and I'm going to post it here as long as I can find it. But you can see in there that there's like a little boy and there were no children present at this investigation and it's very, very creepy. And I mean, it could be some sort of illusion, but I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you feel about that photo. So after all this happens, the family ends up getting offered a book deal and they say no to the first one. And then they end up picking a different book deal. And that was when the book Amityville Horror was written 
and it is based off of all their true events, the ones that I've said here, probably along with a few others. I personally haven't read the book, but I really have been meaning to, especially before doing this, but I... I'm a movie watcher. I'm not a book reader. Forgive me. There is a lot of speculation that with that book deal that George, he actually talks a lot about in interviews and he kind of makes it his story. He was proud to be the Amityville guy, even though Daniel and the rest of the family, they weren't. They didn't like want to put this on a billboard and be walking, you know, Amityville people. There is speculation that George actually chose to have the family do this book deal so that way they could make money in the future and that it was actually all just a hoax. So and not not only that, but there's also, you know, alleged claims that that George Lutz actually did work with um, Ronald Jr. DeFeo in talking about what happened and kind of creating this story. So whether it's true or not, I don't know. Did really want to talk about too. I wanted to kind of touch a little bit on some of the interviews that Daniel Lutz did 30 years later with Laura DiDio. I, like I said, I'm sorry if I said her name wrong, but with that same reporter that was interviewing the family right after this happened, she 30 years later interviews Daniel in the, in the documentary My Amityville Horror and I do believe that's a book too I could be wrong but in the movie Laura interviews him and and he that's when you can kind of see all the emotion in Daniel's face and understand that this is this is what happened for him this is true to him and it's very sad to, to you can see the you can hear the fear in his voice still even 30 years later, like this guy, and he does not want to be known as the Amityville guy. And something that I just really wanted to really point out at the end, just, uh, just so we can remember that anybody who's had a paranormal experience and has seen something like this, even if you don't believe them, it doesn't matter for them. It's very, it's very real and very scary. And so Daniel not only had his few interviews where I got all these stories from with Laura DiDio that um, he also does an interview in that same movie with Susan Bartel and she's a psychologist and I'll leave you with this. Daniel, he says, and I don't know if I'm going to quote this properly, but he says, I'm Danny. I'm Daniel's bodyguard and my job is to protect that 10 year old kid. And that just like gave me goosebumps when he says that because it truly shows his pain as a child and that he's doing everything that he can to move forward from these experiences that he he had when he was a child. So a lot of creepy things, a lot of crazy things. I feel like there's there's so much that that was with this story and I really just wanted to make sure this made sense and I definitely tried to record this a lot and I was worried that I would confuse everybody. So hopefully I did a good job at explaining these weird, crazy paranormal stories that inspired a horror movie. So if you guys have any other horror movies that were based on true stories that you'd like me to kind of talk about the true stories behind it or or, or anything like that. If you even if you if you have a paranormal story that you would like to write in, I would also love to read those too in the future. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna do it for this first video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and support. I'm hoping these videos only get better from here. So I really appreciate you watching and stick around for more spooky stuff. And don't forget to stay weird. <laughs> Bye guys.